Okay, everybody, this is my follow-up video. Um, it's going to be a get ready with me because, yes, I am, of course, getting ready for work. That's what um, I know about everything. So um, I'm also going to be looking at my phone a lot, so please forgive me because I don't have my computer open um, to go ahead and, you know, check it out. But um, there is an article here coming through Healthline that says how eating leafy greens can help people with MS. A recent study showed the older adults can, I'm, I'm sorry, who eat leafy vegetables had a slower rate of memory decline. Um, experts think this phenomenon could also help with people with MS. So um, I'm going to be also getting ready um, at the same time. So, um, but we're going to be discussing how this actually makes a huge difference in a lot of people. And I am just very, very excited. I know that there are definitely people out there that have changed their diets and the way that they eat. And I do think that it actually has made a huge difference in how they, um, how their lives has changed and I know that my aunt Christy other than um, she's passed away already um, unfortunately I lost her a couple years ago just shortly after I lost my dad so probably about four and a half years now um, but what has been going on is I know that my aunt Christy changed her diet as well and that is something that I saw a huge difference so in in accordance with how um, she was really uh, doing she was going to the gym she was getting healthy she was doing all that kind of stuff my aunt Christy passed away from lung cancer uh, nothing related to her MS. Um, so we, um, I have seen firsthand that there are some really big differences that do make a difference when your diet also changes. So um, it says a recent study at Rush University found that participants who ate at least one serving of leafy greens a day had a slower rate of decline in memory and thinking skills versus those who rarely um, or never eat these green vegetables. Now, one reason why I am working very hard at trying to make sure that my memory is still intact is because for one, my um, job requires a lot of memory. <laughs> it requires a lot of muscle memory. Um, it requires a lot of instances where I just straight up need to rely on muscle memory. And even at that, I, I notice that things are a little bit different now that I'm getting older. And of course, this disease is taking its toll. Just like what I've said to you guys before, that there is no cure. And even though you might be on a DMT, um, with this DMT, um, it's just going to slow the progression, the natural progression of the disease and the way it impacts the body anyway. So I think a lot about these leafy green vegetables and about the ones. So I specifically found this one article that I'm very excited to share with you guys because I know a lot of us do incorporate a lot of leafy greens. Um, and we try to work hard at, you know, working out a good diet for us because we know that it's going to be better and that it should be better. So anyway, it says vitamin K foods, which are the leafy green vegetables are like scallions, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, fermented dairy, and prunes. So um, we all know that there's always a connection from one vegetable to another. And normally they don't just do one thing, they do several. So in that, um, with especially with prunes, I don't eat prunes yet, but because I do have issues with going to the restroom, not just because of my MS, but now with the coita equina, which is actually doing quite well. I have just a very slight bit of numbness left and um, I'm not completely um, numb. I can feel my feet, just the outsides of my feet, the outside of um, certain parts of my feet and um, just a little bit on the inside and around my tush area is still the only parts that are technically numb. So I'm very excited about that. But especially now um, when using the restroom was an issue before because of this little syndrome that I ended up with with my back, um, I know that there's always things that we can incorporate, not just for one reason, but for more than one. And honestly, if we can get more than one issue, more than one benefit out of something, then we'll definitely want you know to increase that and keep it going. So um, again, like I said, this is a get ready with me type of scenario. So um, also with this, um, with the leaf greens and the vitamin K, there's some of those foods that are just fantastic. Vitamin E is also a power group of antioxidants. Now, one thing that we have to be careful of is when we have a situation such as ours as it is, I know that using echinacea is something that my doctor says absolutely no go uh, because it stimulates the immune system in such a way that it's too rapid or um, just the way that it stimulates it. He says echinacea is not good for people with MS. So even if you get a cold, don't take those kind of things. That's what my doctor says. Uh, but again, you know, do use your recommendation at your doctor's recommendation. 
don't go based off of me. I am not a doctor. <laughs> Any medical advice, please seek from your professionals. Um, again, I am not a medical doctor. Um, I know that the uh, the flu shot is something that I don't get as well. I don't know if you all get it. I know that they say that people with MS can have the dead virus, which is the shot and not the nasal spray because that is a live virus. That is something that is not okay for us. Uh, we are not authorized to use the live virus because it will make us sick and um, very possibly um, can bring on an exacerbation. So vitamin E is another powerful group of antioxidants um, that can help um, oxidative stress known as, known as our exacerbations. Um, these foods include wheat germ oil, almonds, sunflower seeds, pine nuts, avocado, Atlantic salmon, and rainbow trout. So here's another one. Folic acid is actually uh, found in a lot of leafy greens such as spinach. Spinach is fantastic. Um, I know that that's one thing that really has a lot of folic acid and I know when we when we as women we think about um, having babies and that kind of stuff that's also something that's extremely important for spinal cord um spinal cord uh the word oh, please forgive me development in in um in embryos and stuff too so that is extremely important spinal spinal um Spinal creation in the womb is what I'm thinking. But anyway, asparagus, citrus foods, beans, peas, lentils, bread, cereals, rice, and pasta. And gluten is also something that comes from leafy green vegetables, nitrates, um, some kemperferol that comes from capers, kale, dill seeds, or oh, sorry, dill weed, uh, watercress, uh, broccoli, and turnip greens. And they're saying the connection to MS. Um, with all of this is while the study didn't target those with MS, it hits on an important problem associated with the disease. According to the National MS Society, cognitive changes occur in more than 50% of all people with MS at a varied rate of intensity. Now, this is one thing that I actually have expressed to you guys already as well, that I my fear of not being able to read anymore is something that is real, and it actually scares me to death. Um, I am noticing that there are books lately that have become extremely com um, complicated for me to try to read because I, I feel that sometimes the, the big words are harder words for me to comprehend and to specifically, oh, how would you say, to specifically actually work out. So with these words, I, I see my own um, degradation when it comes to that. I am noticing the changes in my brain already and it, it frustrates me and it makes me want to cry. But the thing about me is that I am what you guys, I, don't, I noticed that you guys have all probably noticed, but I am a redheaded stepchild. And what I will do is I will work very hard to challenge everything. The one thing about our MS guys is that we need to understand is that it is very similar to what it is like uh, with a stroke victim, if you find that you have a challenge and that you are, it's making it so hard for you to understand, try to build around it just like what a stroke victim does. When they have a stroke, that stenosis in their brain is blocking all the neurotransmitters and it actually kills part of the brain. Uh, my mother had a stroke. I know a lot about strokes. And I also know that it's very possible for uh, them to remap the brain. So there is a lot that you can actually do when it comes to that kind of thing. And that is something that I choose um, to use because I am a specific redheaded stepchild and I like the fact that I'm stubborn so I am very stubborn and what I hold on just trying to put some powder under the eyes because I want to use a new I just got a um, new palette from Colourpop and I'm very excited about that so I'm going to put a little bit down before I finish the rest of my face just a little bit of powder so I can just brush it away yesterday I made the mistake of not doing that and I end up with glitter on my face so I was irritated anyway so you can remap the brain just like a, just like a stroke victim and that is important to remember because if you find that there is too many things that you are not really able to concentrate on anymore then I want you to also remember that you have a way to get around that you can it's hard work I will tell you it is very hard work and that is something that I have had a lot of challenges with um, I have been working very hard 
again at working to try to change the cognitive fact of my of my reading so I'm continuing to try to read um, the hard stuff and just try to read around what I don't understand I eliminate outside um, influence I work on uh, distraction lowering my distractions and so that I can definitely just continue to concentrate on the script of what I'm trying to read okay so think about working around um, if you're starting to have trouble with that reading and stuff like that already or whatever your challenges may be work at trying to get around that challenge uh, just remember that you can try to remap the brain it is a possibility um, that we can remap our brain and we can work around the challenges that you might have with that. So that's something that I'm definitely doing. Like I said, minimizing distractions, doing that kind of stuff. So another thing that I'm very excited about trying is, um, is working with new foods and I want to we have a new place well it's not a new place but it would be new for me because I I never really been the type of person that has ever really shopped at a Whole Foods place I had kids to raise um, working full-time working at trying to you know make sure that I had food on the table and I was really quite tired and that's the one thing that I'm finding even today my exhaustion is something that I um, have an issue with and so I still continue with that but I'm thinking about foods that actually help with energy like ones that are protein based ones that are extremely protein based and that's a really good thing such as almonds and, and nuts um, broccoli stuff like that um, cognitive dysfunction can cause significant disabilities it's called cog fog as many with MS call it and it can be quite devastating I don't know why my baby's barking not sure, unless it's Hunter. He left to go have lunch with his dad. Uh, one study recently looked at cognitive impairment as um, defined by the um, expanded disability status scale and found that about 41% of participants had some level of disability when it came to cognitive function. That's what I was just talking about, the ability to understand what you're taking in. That's where I'm challenged. So. Um, they're, they're just saying that some of these, um, along with many of these uh, green leafy vegetables comes more roughage as well. So that would work as well for your bathroom stuff. Um, it also helps out with your stomach if you have issues with that. Uh, my father actually had a paralyzed stomach. And so foods that he would eat were often sometimes a challenge when it came to how he processed it. So when we were little, my dad used to make fun of us because he could eat jalapenos. And he thought that that was very funny because I always thought they were gross and horrible. And um, he, he would eat these jalapenos, but he used to tell me that, Trace, my stomach's paralyzed, so I can't really feel um, how hot these are. So they would bother his tongue, but wouldn't bother his stomach. Well, the rest of us probably would die because he would just eat them and like they were a piece of bread. So it was amusing. My dad thought it was funny. He would tease us girls, uh, us girls with that. So think about some of these things, um, guys. Um, you know what, it, it is so important. Our diet is 10 times um, you know, more important than it used to be uh, prior to this disease. Not that it wasn't important when we were, um, when, you know, before we were diagnosed as well. So it's important to make sure that you, that you can still function and they have to be something that's relatively easy. Find some apps on your phone or whatever that can actually um, work out with the way, how you function in your day so that it doesn't become an extreme taxing um, and exhaustive effort just to cook at night. That's one of the reasons why we often phase down when it comes to food. So um, just, be, just be mindful of what you're doing sometimes pre or splitting up, doing your pre-prep uh, i.e. cutting vegetables, making sure it's all clean already. Sometimes just being able to grab that stuff immediately makes it so much easier for us to try to cook. It, it eliminates 45 minutes of time um, with prep and cutting and that kind of stuff where standing in the kitchen can be extremely exhausting and that's something for me that I find that's very frustrating. I don't like it. Um, that's one of the reasons why I have learned to not um, like cooking. <laughs> it has changed the way that I feel about cooking and I'm thinking now especially that my back is so much better um, that I can function in the kitchen again. So I'm actually looking forward to being back in the kitchen and being able to cook. So it's it, it says right here that diet is a risk factor that people with MS can totally manage. 
um, other modifiable risk factors taken into consideration with the RUSH study that I described already included smoking, drinking alcohol, fish consumption, and exercises that were carefully controlled in the study. So don't forget that diet and exercise kind of work together. Um, if you're starting to gain weight, then you're probably eating too much. I've discussed portion control before. If you're losing weight and you're hungry all the time, then you might need to increase your caloric intake because if you are working out and you're burning too many calories, then you can start to drop weight really quickly and that can cause an exacerbation as well because it throws the system off. So we have to be careful. We have to attempt to keep a uh, sameness in the way that we function as much as possible. And I think that that's actually some of the most best advice that I could ever give anybody. Continue to try to keep the most consistent um, lifestyle that you can uh, as it uh, affects you without having to completely modify the entire um, your entire existence I guess for lack of better terms. So while carefully controlling modified risk factors the samples were a little skewed with participants mainly older and wide. She found that the study interesting um, she found the study quote interesting but needs more research and this is from the doctor um, Oh, that this Dr. Geyser um, that worked in the study through UCF, UCLA, UCLA and their MS program emphasized that the rest study doesn't prove that eating these foods slows brain aging, but it shows an association between the two. And then again, while careful in controlling modified risk factors, the samples were a little skewed because the participants were mainly older and white. So those are both that are young. I think it would be important to discuss with your doctor exactly what you know, you're feeling and how it pertains to what you and your body uh, know. This is where it goes back to the exact same thing I was saying before, that you need to build a huge trust uh, with your doctor. You need to have a very, um, a very long conversation if necessary and you know talk to your doctor about that if you feel that your doctor's not listening to you then try to find another doctor if you don't um, have that option then just try to tell them I need to work with you about this um, again working with your doctor is what is extremely important and being honest with him and the things that you eat this does not mean that every meal has to be something so healthy that you know you just can't have it i i say that life is too short and if you want some cake every once in a while then eat your cake i don't have a problem with that um not at all and i don't believe in living our life so pure that you can't have some of the few enjoys in um, a few enjoyments that we do um like but often just trying to control it on a on a on a more grand scale is something that's important so think about these things again talk with your doctors about them you guys let me know what type of foods that you guys find important because i have just a couple that i really enjoy i do i found a new way to cook asparagus and i i I have found that it is work out, working out so well that I, I buy it consistently now with every visit to the grocery store and so I think that's what's um, good and I, I have learned to enjoy asparagus again and when I was a child we used to go and we used to pick it up along the um, canal banks um, for in Quincy where I lived and uh, we used to go pick it and I would eat it raw but I would never eat it cooked because it got squishy and people just didn't make it still a little al dente so it's slight bit crisp and it just got mushy and my palate just didn't control that real well it didn't work with that real well so in other words you know find some recipes that work for you there are several new apps that can be vegan they can be just regular vegetarian they don't even have to be you can integrate it with eating red meat one thing that you really need to be uh, mindful of though is eating red meat is also something that is bad for your heart um, having just a diet of red meat and that kind of stuff is bad for your heart and there's other things so think about the implication of what it could be if you didn't have just ms so you need to think of your overall health as a whole don't think just ms but definitely think of what it would be like to live a life live your live your body Body as a whole um, treat it kindly uh, we only get one and it is it is such a short life considering the amount of time that we've been here so everybody put down below put your comments and your questions or what what I think about other foods or let's do some research into some other foods what about um, 
the foods that are mostly red, like uh, cabbage and that kind of stuff. We have red cabbage, red onions. There's so many other things. Onions are also extremely important in our diet as well. Um, if there's anything else that you guys would like me to research, I'll probably be putting up some more information about another um, article or two that I found. I have some really great ones that I really want to talk to you guys about. So anyway, thank you for getting ready for it with me. I know it seemed extremely simple. I just got some blush and stuff to throw on, a little lip gloss, and then I'll be ready for work. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a great day. Um, every day is a great day, and I, I, I try to live my life like that. Um, you guys, everybody, try to think of what the positive things in your world are, no matter if you're feeling bad. Think of the, the, the positive things that keep you going every day. And as always, just like I always say, please stay healthy.